All right, welcome back to the channel, everyone. Uh, hopefully, you're all doing well, and uh, this is another video. Now, today's video is going to be talking about my secondary placement. Um, if you don't know what that is, a secondary placement is something that we do at medical school or medical university. You know, if you're from whatever country, uh, you'll know it in different terms. But it's effectively where we spend some time in a hospital setting. Uh, the reason why it's called secondary placement is secondary care is obviously a hospital or A&E or something like that and primary care is something like a GP facility and you know, then you've got tertiary care and so on but the main two are primary secondary care. So we spent a couple of weeks in a hospital. Uh, I spent mine in Northwood Park Hospital which are located somewhere in Northwood um, near Harrow sort of near that location. Now, I live also in Harrow, so you know, it was pretty easy. Um, I originally was going to go to West Middlesex, but uh, if you don't know, I do not live near that. And turns out Northwick Park Hospital is a lot better of a choice for me. So I swapped there and I spent a couple of weeks there doing some work in a particular ward. So my ward was MFE, which stands for Medicine for the Elderly, um, also known as Geriatrics, more specifically Orthogeriatrics. Uh, Orthogeriatrics is very simply just the study of fractures um, in the elderly. So that's a very common thing elderly patients come into hospital with. Um, you can have things like intertrochanteric fractures, you can have things like neck or femur fractures, both similar things. Um, I'll put a diagram here somewhere and it's basically the line connecting the greater trochanter to the lesser trochanter on the neck of the femur. Um, it's complex, you'll learn about it in medical school, but those are the most common fractures they come in with. They also come in with things like extracapsular fractures. These are things that happen outside the neck and the head of the femur. So, you know, something which is pretty nasty. You don't really want to have it, but it's a pretty much a displaced fracture that happens quite low down the thigh bone. So yeah, there's quite a lot of things that they can come in with, but that particular ward specializes in that and really only that. So if you've got a patient who comes in with that, but you know, something else happens in hospital, for example, they get some sort of a neurological condition developing after being in hospital or they get some sort of a HAI um, which is a hospital associated infection uh, all of these things will then be all these things will then be moved to different locations so neurological will obviously be moved to neurology and um, HAI will be moved to ID infectious diseases um, but we well, that ward particularly mainly sees patients who have those fractures and basically helps them get through that now this video mainly is going to be talking about what I did, how I felt, you know, and the things you can expect to see in your placements. And in terms of filming, as you can imagine, it's a little bit difficult to film in a hospital, um, simply because it's not the most ideal place. There are a lot of patients there who probably won't want to be on camera. Um, the staff are probably also not willing to be on camera and it's a hospital, it's not exactly a nice place to film. So I could only really film uh, the mornings or the start and the end of the day when I was in my locker room. But um, you know, if you want to see that footage, I'll put it here. Hi everyone, didn't expect to see you there. I am here in the morning. Um, I, this is sort of Wednesday. Uh, I'm in the locker room, which is why you, know, you can see quite a few locks behind me. Um, it's it's very quiet today, the reason being um, that it's pretty much in the morning and um, people start usually arriving at around, I'd say like half eight, um, around 8.35. Um, that's when people start to get here really. But um, it's currently around, it's just gone 8.10 I'd say, or 8.05, so it's quite early as you can imagine. Um, on top of that, it's also a day which most people spend at home. Um, the only reason we are here, or my little sort of groups here, is because we have to get a form filled out um, by our sort of SPR, which is also known as a specialised registrar. Um, it's sort of just a finishing form so that, you know, we can actually be signed out of our placement. Um, so we're only going to be sticking around for a while. Now, I can't actually film a lot because it's a hospital and it's sort of weird if I walk around filming, um, as you can imagine. But yeah, let's pack my stuff away in the locker and let's get ready for... Right, so pretty much got everything. All we take really is um, our mask, um, an iPad, and pretty much the key to our lockers. 
Um, we're not meant to take much, obviously, because it's a hospital and it's ward. Um, below, we also say bare below the elbows to maintain infection control. Um, I've not done that yet because I'm not actually in the ward. Uh, I don't just walk around with bare below the elbows constantly. But, um, you know, I'll do that when I get to the ward. Um, it's pretty early. Um, I, I don't really know what to do now. Um, I've just come here early so I can film. Um, but yeah, uh, hopefully something will happen soon. Um, or not, but let's wait now. Okay, cool. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that footage. I, it, it's not the best. Uh, it really just shows what I do in the morning and um, exactly what happens in the day is basically we go to the ward. Um, the ward's called Evelyn. Um, it's located on the fifth floor of Norfolk Park Hospital. It's the orthogeriatrics ward and it's pretty normal, you know, it's a pretty standard ward. It's got several bays. Um, a bay is basically a selection of beds. So there's usually about six to, I'd say about 10 beds per bay. And you basically have patients in each of them. They're same sex bays, which means that you don't have men and women in one bay just because it makes it easier to take care of men together as well as this it's also more comfortable for the patients to be in a place with the same gender obviously in wards especially orthogeriatric wards you tend to have patients who will need to get cleaned changed and that can be pretty uncomfortable being in a mixed sex ward so it's quite nice that it's the same sex ward and you know it's got its advantages as well as its disadvantages as well but pretty much it is all about the patient so it's really important in that sense so what did we do? Well, uh, we're only first year medical students, so we're pretty much like flies on the wall on this scenario. We don't do a lot. We just sit there, watch and sort of absorb information. Um, we ask a few questions, but really in terms of medicine, we don't know very much. Um, you know, most of the ward rounds that we went on, questions were being asked, things went over our heads really. We'd never studied these things before. We, we know a couple of basic things, you know, we know some things. However, we don't know a lot and you know, that's expected. Um, but we did cover something. So for example, if you don't know what News 2 is, it's the National Early Warning Score. Now, it's usually done when you go to hospital. You may have seen, for example, a nurse or a doctor come up to you with a trolley. And in the trolley is basically a blood pressure monitor, which also measures your pulse. You've got your oxygen saturation. You've got your temperature. You've got your respiration rate, all of those things in a little trolley. And they come over to you and they basically ask you to, to roll up your sleeves, to open your mouth. And that's what a News 2 is. Um, in hospital, they'll do this pretty regularly. All it does is it measures your simple observations. Now that's really important. It's usually measured about every 10 to 12 hours just to check up on patients to make sure they're doing okay. And it's all recorded in a little chart. Now I'll put the chart on the screen as well. Um, basically you click off the scores at any particular numbers and you basically measure where they go. And if you can see they're going in an upward trajectory, you basically know something's going on with the patient and you can treat them. And it's a pretty foolproof system. Obviously, it doesn't measure quite as everything and a lot of things will be taken into consideration. So for example, if you've got a COPD patient, their oxygen saturation is probably normally going to be quite low. Their respiratory rate could also be quite low. Um, you know, particular conditions will affect patients differently. So you do have to take that into you know, your thinking. But it does serve as a core basic way of seeing how well a patient's doing and if anything is needed to treat them. So we basically learn how to do that. Um, and I'll be honest, it's not that difficult um, really because with modern technology, we don't really have to do anything. Heart rate measuring, oxygen saturation, blood pressure is all just done on a machine. We don't really do anything. Um, temperature is also done on the machine. We don't do anything. And um, obviously with awareness, we don't have to do anything as long as the patient's talking to us and they, you know, are complying with us. It means they, you know, it means their neurological functions are pretty okay, and they can be marked as active on the, which is also on that news two sheet. The only thing that we do have to do is basically measure your respiratory rate and um, also maybe blood pressure. Blood pressure is very easy. You just roll up your sleeves, you stick the thing around you, make sure it's measuring along the brachial artery and then that's it done and that's all you really have to do press the button and wait for it to come up also the only other thing that we have to do is to measure your respiratory rate uh, what we do is we basically say we're going to measure your pulse 
um, and we actually measure your respiratory rate. The reason why, um, if we tell a patient we're going to measure their respiratory rate, which is basically how much, how many breaths they take in per minute or per 15 seconds, just multiply that by four, um, is if we tell a patient that they're probably going to get anxious, they're probably going to realize how they breathe and probably try and breathe normally, um, which is not what we want to measure. So we tell them we're measuring their pulse um, or doing something or maybe measuring their thermometer, we're maybe measuring their temperature again. And we just put our hand on their chest and sort of we just measure how many breaths they're taking. So it's a pretty secret slick method and um, it just helps us measure it in a controlled, in a non-biased environment. Um, it can be pretty difficult though, obviously, if there are loads of people watching you, um, it, you can get quite anxious and it's not ideal, but it does prove as a basic measurement. And in most patients, it tends to give us an accurate, uh, reliable indication of your respiratory rate. So we've learned how to do and use two measurement. Uh, the other thing we did was mainly talking to patients. As a first year medical student, that's all you really do. You spend time talking to patients, learning about their hospital time, learning about what they do at hospital and how they felt about it. And that's a really important thing, you know. Patients tend to find hospital very difficult, and that's normal, you know. Um, but what's more sort of interesting is that they find human contact very important and in a hospital setting it can be really difficult now this is nothing on the nurses or the doctors at all you know they're very pressured they have loads of things to do and they often don't have time to just spend you know a few minutes with the patient talking um, because they've got loads of other things to do they've got blood pressure measurements to take they've got blood tests to go through they've got surgeries to carry out they've got other patients to look after they maybe have got a discharge summary to fill out you know they've got all these things to do and you know, maybe talking or listening to a patient isn't at the top of that priorities. Now, whether that changes or not is not my decision. That's up to the GMC and that's up to, you know, potentially an investigation or potentially a review of the NHS. But a first year medical student, it's a really important thing you guys do when you come to first year is to spend time talking to patients and giving them some time, you know, to speak with another human, not about how they're doing in hospital, not about, you know, their medical data, but more reliably or more responsibly how they're feeling, you know, what they're doing, you know, what their family life's like, you know, talk to them just generally about them. And it sort of makes them forget a little bit that they are in the situation. Now, obviously, it's going to be difficult to do that. And with some patients, it's easier to communicate with for a variety of reasons. If they've got neurological conditions, if they've got, for example, vascular conditions, if they've got, I don't know, Alzheimer's, it can be difficult to communicate with them. But there are certain patients who are just really lovely and they are just happy to talk to people and they just don't get the option to. Um, so I'd say definitely it's a really important thing that we get to do, um, talking to patients. And it can seem a little bit long at the time, but you sort of realise after you've spoken to them, you know, that made a difference. And it is a really good thing that you guys get to do. So I really recommend you spend time doing that. And that's really essentially everything we do. Um, we shadow consultants and nurses. We learn to take basic OBS and maybe a few other things and we talk to patients. Really, that's everything, honestly, that we do. Um, there's not much else to it. It's not very difficult, and um, it's just time for you to basically absorb things and understand everything that goes on in the ward. It's only a few weeks that we do. Maybe other universities may have it for a longer time, um, but at MPL College, we do it for two weeks after your exams in the summer term, and it's a nice way to just cool off after exams. Uh, it's a pretty nice thing to sort of go through. Uh, seeing a hospital is obviously really fascinating because it's where you're gonna be working after your degree finishes and I just think that it's important that you guys get a sense of what it's like and obviously hopefully enjoy it um, so yeah if you've got any questions about it and um, feel free to just ask Imperial if that makes sense and um, they probably have the whole course and syllabus on their website so you can go and check that out um, also if you want to directly ask me feel free to message me on Instagram um, I haven't been active on there for a bit but I'm back active on there now so you can just message me i'll reply to you um, it's been lovely to see messages of you guys all across the world which is pretty cool um i really didn't think we were reaching people in other countries but you know that's awesome if we are um so do let me know where you're contacting me from um not not because i i not because um i i am tracking you down but that sounds sus but I, what i'm trying to say is it would be cool to know where you're contacting me from and um, just because I, I presume that everyone was from london or maybe from birmingham or in that area um just, just let me know where you're from you know it'd be pretty cool to know and um, we've got quite a global audience um sounds a bit too big obviously we've only got 200 subscribers but um 
it's pretty cool to see some of you guys contacting me from around the world, from other countries like uh, Australia, um, places like uh, Argentina as well, which is weird. Um, India, uh, a lot of you guys from India contacted me, which is awesome. I didn't know we had quite a large number of subscribers today, but that's pretty cool. Um, and yeah, so let me know where you guys are from and feel free to ask me any questions that you've got. Obviously, I know most about UK applications, but I'm down to do some research and help you guys out with wherever you guys are from. And yeah, that's the end of the video. Uh, make sure you guys also drop any questions or comments or anything in the comments below. Um, keep it nice. Uh, luckily, we haven't had any nasty comments and uh, everything will be in the description below and also let's try and have it on the screen as well if we can and yeah that's everything if you guys enjoyed the video make sure to drop a like and please 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 do subscribe um, we would love it and we're on 219 subscribers at the moment it's been that for quite a while now I don't know what's happened maybe the algorithm just doesn't like us anymore but um, keep subscribing and um, tell your friends tell your family to subscribe I don't know why your family would subscribe but tell them to yeah we'll see you in the next video